Good morning. Thank you. Before we uh, begin our prayer service this morning, I'd ask, as we uh, enter into this uh, Thanksgiving holiday weekend, as we see family and friends, uh, probably and maybe in some cases for the first time in a very long time, let's be kind to each other, think about each other, and please remember to wear your masks properly while we're seated here in the Student Life Center. Thank you very much. So again, it's my pleasure to welcome you here to our Thanksgiving prayer service in this year of 2021. It is so good to be able to do these communal-wide events together again. And so we, that thought, that idea is not lost on us this morning. So please follow along with your programs uh, this morning. Uh, it has our music. It has um, some prayers that you'll be hearing later as well from different faith traditions. But to kick us off, uh, to give us a greeting, a warm welcome, as well as an introduction to our program theme, is Senior Marcos Ojea Quintana. Good morning. My name is Marcos Ojea Quintana, and I'm a senior. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this year's Thanksgiving prayer service. Um, the theme, like it says on the board, is Thanksgiving is a disposition, not just a holiday. And Thanksgiving is a day of reflection and giving thanks for all we have. However, it's important we express our gratitude not only on Thanksgiving and on the, the holiday this week, but for all year round, giving thanks for what we have. The past year and a half has been difficult, um, I think, for everyone. And desolations make it hard to be thankful and, and that they remind, it's hard to rem remember to be, to give gratitude, but uh, this is when gratitude strengthens our relationship most with God. This Thanksgiving season, personally, I'm most thankful for having my family home all together. My brothers, grandparents, and aunt at home means a lot to me, especially when I haven't seen them in a while. I encourage you all to reflect with gratitude, not only now, but this Thanksgiving season and the future to come. Finally, I'd like to share this prayer with an unknown author about what Thanksgiving means to him. Thanksgiving is a time of gratitude to God, our creator and provider, whose guidance and care go before us, and whose love is with us forever. Thanksgiving is a time to reflect on the changes, to remember that we too grow and change from one season of life to another. Thanksgiving is a time of changing seasons, when leaves turn golden in autumn's wake and apples are crisp in the first chill breezes of fall. Let us remember the true meaning of Thanksgiving as we see the beauty of autumn. Let us acknowledge the many blessings which are ours. Let us think of our families and friends and let us give thanks in our hearts. Thank you. Will the congregation please stand and join in singing our opening hymn found in your program, All Are Welcome.
Please be seated. Good morning. My name is Matt Mitchell, a junior here at Fairfield Prep. I have the distinct pleasure, pleasure of introducing our two faculty keynote presenters, Mrs. O'Connor and Mrs. Moritz. They will be presenting on our prayer service theme. Thanksgiving is, not just a disp is a disposition, not just a holiday. When I reflect briefly on this idea of Thanksgiving, I think of gratitude. I am grateful for my family who is able to support me and allow me to come to this great school. They love me every day, and I think that sometimes it's easy to take that for granted, which we cannot do. Now, first off, we have a reflection from Mrs. Connor, a member of our math department for the last 13 years and a mother of two prep alumni. Good morning, prep. So when I was asked to give a reflection on Thanksgiving as a disposition, not just a holiday, first I had to think about what that actually meant. What is a disposition? It's an attitude or an outlook on life, right? If so, how might, how might we make gratitude an attitude? How do we make gratitude a mindset? How can we wake up every day, not just on Thanksgiving Day, and be thankful for all that we have? Now, I'm the type of person who likes to look at the bigger picture. Overall, I'm very thankful for how fortunate I've been. I have wonderful family and friends. I have a job that I love. I'm in good health. These are huge, really important things to be grateful for, and I imagine most of us are. But shouldn't we also be grateful for the little things too? A hot cup of coffee in the morning, a snow day when you really need it, a beautiful, unexpected sunset. If I'm having a lousy day or a week, or even when something really major happens that throws my life into turmoil, I try to remind myself to be grateful for every blessing, big and small. Rather than focus on negative feelings of, why is this happening to me, I might instead think, did this happen for a higher purpose? Will this negative event in my life make me a stronger person? Will I gain some important wisdom from this experience? And how can I turn this negative event into something positive, something I can actually be thankful for? So this Thanksgiving, I challenge you to really reflect on having gratitude as a mindset. Of course, be thankful on Thanksgiving Day for all of your blessings. But maybe take it a step further this year. Express your gratitude to someone who deserves it by writing a letter or just sending a text. Pray to God and thank him for all that he has given you. Then adopt this attitude of gratitude in your daily life going forward. If we, all took, if we all took on this thankful disposition, it would transform our relationships with our family, our neighbor, neighbors, and even God. This would ultimately lead to our world being a better place. Thank you. Please join in singing our meditation hymn, Set Your Heart on the Higher Gifts.
Next to offer her reflection is Mrs. Moritz, who has been a member of the Foreign Language Department for the last 19 years. Happy Thanksgiving. We will say and hear these two words a lot in the next few days. Teachers will say it to you as you leave class today. Members of the bomb squad will say it to each other as they gather tomorrow night at the Prep versus West Haven football game. Family and friends will pull up a chair to the table full of all our Thanksgiving favorites, pausing to say Happy Thanksgiving before sampling the feast. Thursday's holiday allows us to take a formal step back and say thank you. We are given a chance to take a break from the plugged in, hectic days to think about gratitude and what it means to be grateful. So, what are you thankful for? It is at this time of year that this catchy little song fills my head and repeats itself for days on end. When I sing this song, I immediately smile as the memory of my young daughter singing this at school and one of those proud parent moments comes to mind. The image of this joyful moment brings me peace and my heart is filled with love. This one simple memory is something that causes me to express gratitude for my family and the love and support I receive from them. As I pause and reflect on that moment, it brings me to thank God for the people I have in my life. Something as simple as this can help us to pause and be grateful for the many blessings in our lives, especially here in the halls at Fairfield Prep. I'm grateful for things that may seem insignificant to most, a student coming in for extra help for the first time, someone stopping to really hold the door, seeing a student offer assistance to an adult carrying something in the hall, an often late to class student arriving on time, hearing about a goal scored, a college acceptance, success in another class. All of these seemingly insignificant things to you are things that can make it on the pumpkin. You see, a few years back to teach our daughter about gratitude, we purchased a pumpkin. We always save a small pumpkin from being turned into a jack-o'-lantern and place it in the center of the table just after Halloween. At some point during dinner every night until Thanksgiving, you have to pick up the Sharpie and write something from the day you are grateful for. The goal is to try and find something different each and every day. This small family tradition has helped us to think about our daily story. We all have our own story. We are all on our own paths in this life. Things won't always be perfect memories of silly Thanksgiving songs performed at school plays. There's a whole lot more that goes on in our lives each and every day. The important thing is to pause to give thanks for something, anything along our journey. Despite the challenges or the worries we may encounter throughout the day, giving thanks for something, even something that might seem small or insignificant at first, will help us to be more present, find joy, and feel peace. Expressing gratitude should be about looking beyond what is wrong and difficult and trying to find something good. It doesn't mean that having a grateful heart will take away the stresses of life, but it could mean helping us continue on a path, our path a little easier. Our stories are filled with so many people that we meet along the way. While I hear the song play again in my head, what are you thankful for? I would often stop and say the first thing, and it would often be food, a great job, and while I am grateful for those blessings, of course, I find myself going deeper, really and truly reflecting on more. Someone once told me that we have people placed into our lives at various times on our journey for a reason, and even when things are challenging, and the situation, and maybe even the outcomes aren't ideal, or what you had envisioned it to be, God's graces are there. His graces are there, and gratitude for those graces brings hope and even peace. With this wise advice, while I'm grateful for many things, I tend to focus on the people God has put into my life along the way. When I really have the time to sit and reflect and pray, I go back. There's so many amazing people that have helped to shape not only who I am, but also have brought me to where God has intended me to be. Gratitude should be more than just saying a quick thank you or happy Thanksgiving. Those words should have some love behind them. Do we begin all things with thanks? Being grateful is a choice that we can make every day to help us find the positive, to remember that God is present in all things. There's another part of that little song. It actually ties back to something Mrs. O'Connor spoke about. The next verse goes, we've got an attitude of gratitude, yeah, yeah, yeah. So do we? 
Do we have an attitude of gratitude? Do we show our genuine appreciation for the people in our lives? Do we help out at school and at home? Are we leaders stepping up to do the right thing and support those most in need? Not only will these little moments make the day of someone you encounter, but they will also become those moments that you reflect on later, and they can fill your heart with peace, hope, and joy. We have been challenged this year to see all things new in Christ. Maybe gratitude is the first step on our journey to seeing all things new in Christ. With a grateful heart, we see all of God's graces in our lives and the joy that they can bring. Pope Francis says, joy springs from a grateful heart. Truly we have received much, so many graces, so many blessings. We rejoice in this. This holiday and beyond, I encourage you to find that joy. Good morning. My name is Ian Nolan, and for the next part of our Thanksgiving service, we will hear prayers from different faith, faith traditions. The, next, the text for these prayers can be found in your programs. Please pray along and reflect on Thanksgiving and gratitude in your own life. The first prayer on Thanksgiving comes from the Hindu faith tradition. Uh, hello, I'm Pranav Yera from the junior class and I will be presenting the prayer from the Hindu faith religion. Food is the gift of the whole universe, the earth, the sky, and much hard work. We may live in a way that makes us worthy to receive it. May we transform our unskillful states of mind, as best we are greed. May we take only foods that nourish and prevent illness. We accept this food so that we may realize the path of our practice. May you, your family, your friends, your neighbors, and my neighbors our country, all the nations of the world, and the creatures and plants of this beautiful world. May all beings everywhere be happy, satisfied, and safe. Thank you. Prayer of Thanksgiving from Christianity. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all blessings, source of all life, giver of all grace, we thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains us, for the food of this earth that nurtures us, for the love of family and friends without which there would be no life. We thank you for the mystery of creation, for, for the beauty that I can see for the joy that the ear may hear, for the unknown that we cannot behold filling the universe with wonder, for the expanse of space that draws us beyond the definitions of ourselves. We thank you for setting us in communities, for families who nurture our becoming, for friends who love us by choice, for companions at work who share our burdens and daily tasks, for strangers who welcome us into their, into their midst, for people from other lands who call us to grow in understanding, for children who lighten our moments with delight, for the unborn who offer us hope for the future. We thank you for, for this day, for life, and one more day to love, for the opportunity, and one more day to work for justice and peace, for neighbors, and one more person to love, and by whom be loved, for your grace, and one more experience of your presence, for your promise, to be with us, to be our God and our salvation. Great thanks, eternal loving God, for all these blessings through Jesus Christ, amen. A prayer of thanksgiving for Islam. O oh Allah, make good for me my religion, which is a means of guarding my matters, and make good for me my world, which is a means of my livelihood and make good for me my hereafter, and which is my returning, and make my life a means of abundance of all good, and my death a means of comfort and peace, free from all that is bad. A Thanksgiving pray from Buddhism. 
Lama Raja Sung Chiu, Sung Jalaya Sung Chiu, Chiu Raja Sung Chiu, Gunna Raja Sung Chiu. Guan Zi Zai Pusa, Xing Shen Bo Er Bo Er Mi Do Shi, Zhao Jian Wu Yun Jie Kong, Du Yi Xie Ku E. Shi Li Zi, Se Bu Yi Kong, Kong Bu Yi Se. Se Ji Shi Kong, Kong Ji Shi Se. Shou Xiang Xing Shi, Yi Fu Wu Shi. Shi Li Zi, Shi Zhu Fa Kong Xiang, Bu Sheng Bu Mie, Bu Gou Bu Jing, Bu Zeng Bu Jian. Shi Gu Kong Zhong Wu Se, Wu Shou Xiang Xing Shi. 无眼耳鼻舌身意，无色声香味触法，无眼界乃至无意识界，无名亦无明尽，乃至无老死亦无老死尽，无苦集灭道，无智亦无得，亦无所得故。菩提萨埵依般若波罗蜜多故，得阿耨多罗三藐三菩提。故知般若波罗蜜多是大神咒，是大明咒，是无上咒，是无等等咒，能除一切苦，真实不虚。故说般若波罗蜜多咒，即说咒曰：揭谛揭谛，波罗揭谛，波罗僧揭谛，菩提萨婆诃。A prayer from Judaism. We gratefully thank you, for it is you, Adonai, our God, and God of our forefathers, for all eternity. Rock of our lives, shield of our salvation, are you from generation to generation. We shall thank you and relate your praise for our souls that are entrusted to you, for your miracles that are with us daily, for your wonders in every season, evening, morning, and afternoon. The beneficent one, for your compassions were never exhausted, and the compassionate one, for your kindnesses were never ended. Always have we put our hope in you. A Native American prayer. O、oh, great spirit, whose voice I hear in the winds, and whose breath gives life to all the world, hear me. I need your strength and wisdom. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever hold the red and purple sunset. Make my hands respect the things you have made, and my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise so that I may understand the things you have taught my people. Let me learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. Help me remain calm and strong in the face of all that comes toward me. Help me find compassion without empathy overwhelming me. I seek strength, not to be greater than my brother, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes. So when life fades as the fading sunset. My spirit may come to you without shame. Thank you, gentlemen. And、uh, our next part of our program is a brief video、uh, featuring some of you on what you are thankful for this Thanksgiving season. Is the prep community finally be able to celebrate together during these festivals? Hi, I'm Nick Vittoria, and I am grateful for my family being all together again、uh, and to be in one place this Thanksgiving, and that we get to spend the time together in person. Charles Dooley, and、uh, I'm thankful for the first responders and everything they do to keep us safe. And、uh, hi, my name is Hudson Wingate, and one thing I'm thankful for is the Prep Brotherhood for all the opportunities that I've been given by coming here at Prep. For the opportunities I have here at Prep. My house. I'm thankful for my family. Family. I'm thankful for the cafeteria workers in the SLC. I'm Ken Costigan. This Thanksgiving, I'm super, I'm super grateful for the opportunity to take some time off and go visit new places and see the world. Hi, I'm Daniel Tristine, and this Thanksgiving, I am thankful for family. It all started with a family, the Holy Family, and even the Trinity. God is love. And therefore, through His divine presence, the importance of the family is truly realized. And so, what a better time to celebrate God's gift of family than during Thanksgiving, 
where we all come together as a community to celebrate the joys in our lives. support through their prayers, for those who are dying, for those who died while saving the lives of others, for those who have died from acts of terrorism around the world, for those who have lost their lives. Seniors, please be seated. Uh, juniors, please stand. For those who survived, for the children who have been orphaned and for parents whose children have died, for all the men and women who have lost their spouses, for all who mourn, and for those who comfort them. Juniors, please be seated. Sophomores, please stand. For peace in our cities and in our world, for peace and mutual respect on our campus, for humility and the courage to embrace the diversity of faiths and cultures, for a greater appreciation and love of all humanity. Freshmen, please stand. For patience and perseverance, for calm in the midst of fear, for forgiveness and the grace to overcome adversity, for the generosity of spirit, for hope in times of despair, for light in the darkness. Freshmen, please be seated. Can everyone please stand? We stand in the darkness with candles of thanksgiving and peace. We stand in memory of those who have died to affirm that they are not forgotten. We stand in support of those who grieve to comfort them in their sorrow. We stand in solidarity with those who are suffering to affirm that they are not alone. We stand in hope and commitment for justice and for peace. We go in peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. To conclude, to conclude, we will be doing an examined prayer. Our examine is cultivating uh, the cultivating gratitude examine. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Invite the Holy Spirit to help you see your day, your week, and your school year thus far as God sees it. Be thankful. Name the gifts of your life and thank God for them. Notice God's presence. Where did you feel an increase of faith, hope, and love? Notice where you felt what seemed like a lack of God's presence. Where did you feel a decrease of faith, hope, and love, and why?
Look to the future. Ask God for the grace you need in the day and week ahead. And we will conclude uh, with saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and free of us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, now I'd like to introduce, with uh, some closing remarks, uh, Mr. Cashman. Thank you, Nick, and thank you to our campus ministry team, to Mr. Gualtieri, all of our readers, musicians, and reflections this morning. They were truly inspiring. As we end today, I'd ask all of us here and in the Bowton Academic Center and the McLeod Center to please, let's just stand quickly and offer a sign of peace and thanks to each other. Peace, boys. Thank you so much. I invite you to take your seats. So as we conclude today, I just want to offer a few brief words of thanks and reflection. First of all, I love this quote that's at the end of our program today from Meister Eckert. If the only prayer you ever utter is thank you, it will be enough. If the only prayer you ever utter is thank you, it will be enough. And it makes me think of Ignatius, of course, because Ignatius knew if you pray in gratitude, you cannot have a closed heart or a closed mind. You can't be grateful and closed hearted at the same time. So I just urge everyone, one of us today as we go forth in Thanksgiving to have an open heart in that Jesuit tradition. And I personally want to say thank you. Thank you to our faculty and our coaches and our mentors to our counselors, to you, our boys in the brotherhood, to your parents, to your grandparents, to our staff, to our faculty at the university, to our leadership at the university, to those who serve our food, right? To those who drive our buses, to those who keep the lights on, to those who clean our classrooms, to all who serve the mission. Every single day I am filled with gratitude for these things, and I know you are too, but especially today, I want to say thank you. I want to thank the brothers of the alumni of Fairfield Prep who make it possible to do what we do every single day. I had the pleasure last week of being in Washington, D.C. and visiting many of your prep brothers who have graduated, including Dr. Jim Barrett, class of 60, who we know gave us that amazing gift for Xavier IV. Dr. Barrett, uh, in his twilight of his years in retirement, um, greeted me and welcomed me to Sibley Memorial Hospital, where he was receiving chemotherapy treatment. He welcomed me into his hospital room during chemotherapy, as if nothing was wrong, to simply regale me with stories about Fairfield Prep in 1960, about his love of the Jesuits, his brothers, how he caddied at Brooklawn Country Club to help his parents pay his tuition, and how he loves Prep. And he said, Prep owes me nothing. I owe Prep everything. And for me, that was a moment of great consolation and gratitude. That is the Prep Brotherhood over decades. And I wanted to share that story with you to be aware, to be conscious that every single day in ways we see and don't see, the Prep Brotherhood supports us. And it's a great gift. Well, we also know that gratitude always leads to service. And so it's a very special uh, tradition here at Prep during our Thanksgiving prayer service to honor uh, years of service among our faculty. In our faculty, we have literally hundreds of years of service to Fairfield Prep. It's a humbling gift, but each time we get to this point in the year, we want to honor those who have made a particular milestone. So we have two members of our community who have served 20 years at Fairfield Prep, older than, than all of our students here, 20 years of their lives to prep. First, and although she is not here today because she has a, a family obligation, I do want to honor her, uh, our first 20-year awardee is someone who has served as assistant to the Dean of Students for 20 years. That's a long stretch in the Dean's office. For the uh, famous Mr. John Brennan and Dean Davis, she has been the mother of prep, the mom to many. She has greeted more prep, prep, prep students, 
parents and helped more boys, given out more directions, welcomes, and masks than we can count. Practically anyone at PrEP knows that she is our biggest fan. She's a PrEP mom, not only to her own son, but to all PrEP boys. She has a kind word every day that you see her in the front hallway. And we are so thrilled to honor Mrs. Cindy Bercoli. Please join me in thanking Mrs. Bercoli. Be sure to congratulate her when we return after break. Uh, next is uh, a, a tremendous woman for others uh, who actually gave beautiful reflection to us today. Serving in her 20th year in our world language department, known to many as Madame. She came to Fairfield Prep many years ago uh, as a bright-eyed student out of Fairfield University and over her time has become a true Ignatian educator with love of her students and a care for each and every boy. She has impeccably high standards for her classes and an elegant way of teaching language. She has served as student government moderator and is always mission driven for PrEP and our boys. She is beloved by her colleagues who consider her friend and sister. She plans retreats. She's concerned about the spiritual health of every person and every colleague at PrEP. She's a great mother, a great wife, and a true example of a woman for others. Please join me in congratulating for 20 years of service, Madame Jennifer Moritz. So it wouldn't be Thanksgiving without a final thank you, and the final thank you goes to the men of PrEP. As you know, we have been grinding since November the 1st at my last challenge to you at uh, the Mass of All Saints to meet the Great Ignatian Challenge. I said in the, on that day that Fairfield PrEP are never done and are not to be outdone in their generosity. So I am absolutely thrilled to announce that even with uh, you know still online donations coming in, Fairfield Prep and the Brotherhood of Fairfield Prep have blown through 20,000 to 21,904 donations. Therefore, I declare the Monday after Super Bowl Sunday a holiday. Enjoy it, brothers. Thank you. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. Go prep. As we go forth, please stand and join in singing our closing hymn, Find Us Ready.
Good morning, gentlemen. Please have a seat. Thank you. At this time, it's uh, around 10.45. Uh, so we'll be going back to second period to collect your belongings. You'll be staying in second period until the bell rings, at which point you'll be going to third period. Uh, those students and faculty are, who are in the McLeod Center and who are in the Academic Center, uh, at this point, um, you can be dismissed to go to, back to your rooms uh, and sit there until the end of the period. What we're going to look at doing in here is we need to get some of these chairs um, packed up. Uh, but we basically need to go from the Pillars back, those are the only ones that are going to get uh, stacked. Uh, you have teachers and administrators in the back who will assist you. Uh, what we'll do at this point is dismiss those students who, and teachers who are in the, who are forward of the pillars to go back up to your classrooms. So teachers, please go ahead first. Teachers first. Thank you. <laughs> 